Hello, my name is Phil Longo. I'm the offensive coordinator at Southern Illinois University. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the bubble screen, uh, specifically game planning for the bubble screen, certain variations that we have utilized to gain an advantage um, in attacking with the bubble. And then lastly, uh, we're going to touch on some play action passes that we have been successful with and uh, feel are a good complement to the bubble screen package uh, that we have at Southern Illinois at this time. First, with regards to game plan, um, I think it's important that you know, we understand as a staff and we also feel it's important that our players understand that this is a play that's going to be, a, it's going to be an opportunistic play. And that means we need to have a particular uh, flank defense, a particular set to the perimeter um, by the defense that we're attacking in, a, in an effort to uh, have success. We're going to need a specific look uh, before we run this play. Um, and it, you know certain screens that we have in the system and certain screens that you may have in your offense um, really can be run at any time. Some are predicated on having pressure, others are predicated on defenses that are dropping to defend the passing game and some screens are actually universal where coaches feel you can run them at just about any point in time in the game against any type of defense. The bubble screen does not fit into that category. You know I mentioned uh, in an earlier tape where we talked about technique and uh, installation of the bubble screen along with our philosophy um, with regards to when to run the bubble screen I alluded to it not being a bread and butter play it's not something that you can run just at any time and I think you have to have uh, the ability to check in or check out of it over here on the board I have trips drawn up and I would just I would say to you here with this perimeter, when we identify, and this is what we need to do, uh, the three most dangerous defenders from the sideline. We've got three offensive skill kids to that side, whether they're tight ends, RBs, or receivers. We've got three there. If we can outrun the third, we feel like we can run bubble and be successful. Now, I also alluded to um, in a, in a previous presentation, one, we've got to make the block on number one and number two. Without block on one and two in this trip situation, the bubble is dead. The second thing is we've got to have very, very efficient execution with regards to the quarterback's step and trigger time and the receiver's path down the line, maintaining respect to the line of scrimmage. Um, we do not want him to address the line of scrimmage. We want to catch the ball in front of himself so that he can maintain his gait and we can effectively win our race against number three in this particular formation. So we need to make this block, we need to make that block. This is purely a stalk, this is going to be a stalk or a cut. We're now going to outrun whoever becomes the most dangerous number three. That would be um, a situation where we would like to run bubble when we're in a trips formation. If we change this defense, We'll roll a safety down here. We'll spin a safety down. We've got an OB here. We have a free over the top. They are three for three. We do not have a leverage advantage on number three. Okay. And we feel that this is a is not a very good uh, situation to run bubble. Now it's common sense, but very often when I evaluate film and we see bubble, this is